Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. You've heard me say before that narcissism is a pattern on a spectrum and down on the far end of the spectrum is what we would refer to as malignant narcissism. Now, I'm going to talk with you today about a particular category of malignant narcissism that I know that many of you are familiar with, and that's the category of sociopaths. Now, that technically, in today's nomenclature, we call it the antisocial personality disorder, but it's more commonly known as sociopaths. These are individuals who have all of the earmarks of narcissism. They, they're very selfish and they're very entitled and they're very controlling and they uh, hide behind the, the veneer of a false self, etc. <clears throat> but then when you go into that area of sociopathy, there are other primary ingredients that come to the forefront that make them distinct as malignant narcissists. Now, first and foremost, when we talk about someone who has strong sociopathy, Basically, we're going to say that their sense of morality, shall we say, is suspended in favor of much more callous kinds of behaviors and thinking they don't want anybody telling them what to do. Their goal is dominance and they want to have a sense of favor from individuals that are there in front of them. That's of utmost importance. They have an attitude of superiority that comes out as entitlement. And, and basically, their theme is nobody tells me what to do. If I want something, I deserve it, I'm going after it. And that, that being the case, they have a very strong disdain for accountability. They are strongly leery of anyone who wants to impose any form of authority over them. They, they basically have a very, very low to the point of non-existent sense of empathy. By, by that, I mean it's their way of saying, I don't really care uh, how my actions make you feel. It's just not my concern. Now, you can see that, uh, that narcissists in this sociopathic uh, way of life uh, are going to be very shall we say, troublesome in the way that you engage with them. And there's one very common theme that we watch for with these individuals, and that is they, they will actually gravitate toward other sociopathic narcissists. One of the common questions I have is, do narcissists uh, find each other and do they are they attracted to one another? And the answer is, oh yes, uh, very much so. The psychopath may be more of that loner, but the sociopathic narcissists are drawn toward other individuals who will go along with them. And, and uh, it, it's, it, it's like, I, I'm, I'm looking for someone who's like-minded. Oh, you think like I do? Let's team up. Now, it tends not to last for a long period of time, and it tends to get ugly before the end of, the, uh, of their relationship. But there are some very uh, common uh, illustrations that I could give you. Let me, let me give you an extremely large illustration. Let's go all the way back to the days of the gladiators where you have a whole coliseum full of people and there are two individuals down there in the arena and the goal is one's going to kill the other. Okay, somewhere in that equation, we tend not to think like this, but somewhere in that equation, you had some sort of group of sociopaths thinking this will be a, a real entertaining thing for us to do, and they don't care anything at all worth uh, about morality. And then they had other individuals that'll say, well, let's see if we can make some money off of it. And so they do so, and then they actually encourage the group around the large crowds to join in and cheer. We don't have anything like that in our current world, do we? Yes, we do. Or let's take it on a smaller level. Let's suppose you have two individuals who get together, uh, they're married, and uh, they decide, well, why don't we sneak off and have an extramarital affair? And you have individuals who are willing to suspend morality and they have this me first and I don't care what it does to other individuals. And so they bring their common uh, narcissism together in that regard. Or another illustration, I remember talking with three brothers 
who just kind of had this um, this little club, if you will, where uh, they were uh, constantly encouraging uh, each other to exploit women. They had very strong addictive behaviors with alcohol and gambling, and they would leave their own personal family obligations in a heartbeat if it meant that they could go off and do something that would just be, in their uh, uh, way of saying, crazy fun. But they would encourage each other, and they would keep themselves propped up together. Or you can even have family systems and organizations that encourage antisocial behavior or attitudes. Uh, you might just have a group of buddies who get together and they're just bent on, uh, on a no rules type of uh, rebellion. And it's like, nobody's gonna tell us what to do. And when someone suggests that this is, not, is problematic, it's like, well, we are not gonna uh, uh, concern ourselves with that. The, there are so many different ways that narcissists can team up with other narcissists in this sociopathic nature. And basically what they're looking for is first, somebody who's shallow. Second, they're looking for somebody who will go along with their particular brand of groupthink. And then uh, they're also looking for someone who will actually cheer irresponsibility and call it fun. Now, taking it a little bit further, there are desires or there's an end game to narcissists, uh, sociopathic narcissists seeking out other sociopaths. First, uh, they like being around someone who has common goals for, um, for uh, irresponsibility and even debauchery. It's kind of like anything goes and if you're with me, I'm all in and it just somehow makes it okay. Or beyond that, they actually have this notion that implies their strength in numbers um, I mean, if all of us are doing this, I mean, it can't be that bad. And so that, that uh, sense of, of new, uh, numeric uh, collegiality somehow gives them a feeling of okayness about what they're doing. In addition, uh, when they seek out other fellow sociopaths to prop them up, it allows for them to have uh, to engage in what I recur would refer to as mutual rationalization. Well, uh, we don't want anybody to, uh, to, uh, to make us go into analytical thinking. I've got your back and we're okay, we're good, we're just uh, good old boys having fun. When in fact, no, there's a, there's a trail of hurt that you're leaving behind you. Uh, likewise, uh, when you seek out another sociopath to join you, it allows you to have what we might call mutual mockery of those who are seeking out common decency. How many times have you been around individuals who make fun of people that say, I don't think I wanna go into that space with you. Uh, that's, that's way outside of my comfort zone and, and the sociopaths can get together mutually and make fun of you and ridicule you. And it can kind of give them a feeling of credibility, a shield of defense, if you will. Hey, look, other people are doing this, so I, I'm not that bad. Uh, everyone else is, uh, is in on the game, so why not? I'm just going to join them. And, and it allows them to have a, a form of justification for who they are. Basically, sociopaths are individuals who have given their conscience a vacation. And in some cases, it's a very long vacation. They're very now oriented. They have no sense of future think. Uh, they, they have no particular concern about where their behaviors and their attitudes are leading them. And if they can have other individuals that'll come along and say, hey, I'm on the same team as you, then it's all the better. So, Let's suppose that you're in the presence of individuals who think like this and they're looking for other fellow sociopathic narcissists to, to join them. How are you going to respond? Well, first of all, keep in mind that it's, it's important for you to know who this person is that's in front of you who's just determined to go into their hard rebellion. They want you to think that you are the outlier. And maybe in your world, you actually are. Um, but then it's, it's like, well, I'm okay with that. I, I recall one guy talking with me about how he had gone to a bachelor party the night before a guy was getting married and, uh, the guys got ridiculously drunk, brought in a prostitute and, and, uh, had the prostitute play games with the, with the groom. And of course, uh, when the bride, bride found out it was just it was worse than awful. Uh, it was just a terrible kind of situation. But uh, it, it, you want to remind yourself, okay, these are individuals who haven't thought things through very clearly. Uh, they're not concerned about the impact that they have on others. I don't know that I want to be in that club at all. In addition, when you see this kind of thing happening in front of you, 
I hope it can cause you to develop a very strong grasp upon your own internal values. Now, what they'll say, the sociopath, what they'll say is you're just being judgmental. And uh, what I say is, no, you're being discerning. Uh, you're, being, uh, you're trying to uh, apply wisdom to a circumstance that's anything but wise. Also, know what makes sense to you. My, my, you've heard me say, and, and, I, and it's, it, it seems so easy to say this, and yet there's some individuals that just brush it off. What makes sense to me is love or respect or courtesy or big picture thinking or self-restraint. Tell that to the sociopath, and they'll say, oh, I do all that. It's like, well, in this moment, you're certainly not. Make sure that if someone wants to pull you into their sociopathic collective, that you can uh, kindly say, I I'm just not on the same page as you. I don't want to be in that world, and I'm hoping that that's something that you can examine in a more careful kind of way. Be willing to speak up and stand for who you are. And then if, uh, if these individuals are just determined to go on in their own way, you're going to need to withdraw and understand that their group think is not something that's going to be something that defines you. It intoxicates them, but uh, I, I don't want to be in, inside of that kind of world. Sociopaths are attracted. They gravitate toward other sociopaths who reinforce their anything goes kind of mentality. Healthy people realize, well, we do need each other in an affirming kind of way, but not for the purpose of diminishing other individuals. I, I don't want to be involved in, in behaviors that, that destroys other individuals' lives and steps all over their legitimate needs. So collective sociopathy is a real thing. It's a real option. But I'm hoping that you'll join me in saying, well, I'm on Team Healthy, and I want to focus on dignity, respect, and civility. I hope this gives you some awareness of what you might have in front of you. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to keep more videos coming in your direction. Uh, likewise, you know that uh, uh, I've been sponsored for years now by the people at BetterHelp.com. If you have a need for therapy as you're trying to work through some of the circumstances that are associated with this, please uh, seek out the therapy. I've had so many individuals who've told me that they were able to find a good therapist through the online service there. Uh, there's a link below that will take you to their website. And if that's a need that you would have, I would strongly encourage you to get the assistance that you need. Uh, keeping in mind, the, the sociopaths want you to get into their group thing. You need to have a strong interior. Likewise, I have my courses. And each course uh, is, uh, is like signing up for an online class. It's very extensive, takes a lot of work. I put a lot of work into them uh, and they will guide you in a particular direction. We have the course Ready, Set, Connect about having good connections. This is me about establishing your, uh, about being yourself uh, despite the controllers in your life, free, free to be, uh, and it's all about boundaries, et cetera. They're, they're all on our website and they'll explain themselves to you. Uh, and so I would encourage you to go into that space. Likewise, I have my webinars that I've presented. We have my podcasts, books. Our website has many articles, so plenty of resources. Okay, there are, there are malignant narcissists, and then there are malignant narcissists who have that strong sociopathic bent. Know what you're dealing with so that you can have a, a prepared way of understanding who you are and how you're going to respond to them. And I'm hoping that you can join us on Team Healthy when we say, I just want to stand for decency. And I want to be the kind of person that says, if you're in my presence, you're in the presence of someone that wants to build your significance. And if we all can do that, then that's a healthy kind of, uh, of communal uh, encouragement. Uh, I hope for you to, uh, to find your sense of centeredness. And in the long run, I hope that you can be a person of peace. <laughs>